All right. Now I want to introduce uh, another couple features, one of them having to do with mirror, but I'm also going to talk about uh, extruding up to a certain surface. So let me sketch onto this plane. And the first thing I want to do is create a circle. Now, here I have this reference surface, so I can snap to here, but I'm going to want to put my center of my circle at this corner, but I don't have any geometry here to, to snap to yet. So I can do this. I'm going to snap here, draw my circle, and we'll get out of it, and we'll see that we have a dimension here. Let's make it 170. But I have a dimension here being 130. Now, that c I could use that to be make it out to 100. If I remember right, this was 300. So if I make this 150, I'll be at this point. But again, that does not capture what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make sure that this point is always at this corner. So what I'd like to do is come over here to the right-hand side and use these constraint flyouts. So, and the one that I'm talked about in class is this uh, coincident constraint. So I'm going to click on it, and again, noting the language, I am going to make the center of this circle, clicking on it, coincident with this line, this edge that forms the side of my part. So I'll click on it, and I'm done. Now, of course, this box is up here asking me, because I'm still in the coincident tool, it's asking me, is there any other stuff that I want to do? Well, there isn't right now, so I'm going to say OK, or I'm going to say cancel, rather. Now, I'm going to show you what happens when I extrude this. I'm going to say I'm done, and I'm going to extrude. I'm going to flip the direction, cut out the material, and go through all the model. I'll say that I'm done, and I've actually cut through more of the model than maybe I was intending. Say I only wanted to cut out the base. So what I can do is there's no point editing the definition of the extrude itself because it's done everything I wanted it to do. It's gone all the way through the part and it's removed the material and it's gone through to the next surface. So what I really need to do is I need to edit the definition of the sketch to not include this material up here. So I'll come in and I'm going to use my line tool to snap to this intersection, snap to the corner, snap to this intersection, and again I'll middle mouse button to get out of it. But notice I'm still in the, draw the line drawing command, so I still I'm sort of uh, need to come up here and click my arrow. Well now I have two interior sketches, this area and this area, so I'm going to use the delete segment tool to get rid of this circle. So I'll come down here to delete segment and I'll delete this part. Notice that it's coming between here and here. It, it uses these edges as actual surfaces for trimming out of sketches and this one and this one. So now I have this as being my area. So now when I'm going to say check mark done, it's going to use this sketch and because the sketch is part of the extrude over here on the left hand side, it's going to go through and rebuild the extrude. And that's more of what I was expecting to get. Alright, so now what I want to do is I want to draw a hole on the bottom. So I'm going to look, I'm going to go to the sketch on the bottom here but now I can't see any of my lines so this is the reason why I might want to go through and look at a hidden view and here this vertical line is the line that defines this curve so again I'm going to look at the bottom which is where I'm sketching and notice that here's where my reference plane is I'm not going to bother with switching it right now, but I could have gone up here. Well, actually, why don't I? Let me cancel my sketch and actually get the correct reference plane that I want. So I'm going to sketch. I'm going to go here. And here's the orange box that defines my sketch plane, but here's the red line, which is my reference. Well, I don't want this one. I'd rather this center one up here, which is the front plane. So I'm going to click on that. 
and now I'll say OK. So now, see, I can grab this line and this line. So when I draw my circle over here, I'm snapped directly to the center of this object. So I'll come in here. I'll put my dimensions on. Let's say 40 and 110. And I'll say that I'm done. Now, let's take a look at what we got here. I'll leave it in this view for a second. And let me do my extrude. I'm going to flip the direction. I want to remove the material and I want to go all the way through my object. And I'll say done. See all these red lines? That's what I actually did cutting through. So let's look at it in solid. Well, maybe that wasn't my intention. Maybe my intention was just to cut through this part. So now I can edit the definition of my extrude, which is extrude 4 over here. I'll right click, edit the definition. And instead of going through everything, I'm going to use this one, which is extrude up to the next surface. So it's telling the circle, only find the next surface and only go through that. So when I say OK now, so the circle, the sketch went up and continued until it passed all the way through the next surface, which is defined by this curve here. All right, last operation. What would happen if I want to use this feature and this feature and put it over on this side and I didn't want to redraw them? Well, I have a plane that is exactly in the center of my part and I can use it as a mirror plane. So I'm going to come over here, selecting extrude 3, which is the curved surface, hold my control key down and use extrude 4 and now come over here, now that I've selected these things, this group has one icon that's now active, which is the mirror plane. So I'm going to select it. It's asking me to select a plane or datum plane to mirror about. This is the one I want. Now notice what happens here. Um, I'll select here, and all it's giving me as a preview is that this is the plane that I'm going to mirror about, and these highlighted in orange, these features are the ones that are going to be mirrored. That is what I want to do, so I'll say OK, and there we go. There's my additional features. So, uh, on the last thing I wanted to do in this one was to introduce uh, the chain feature of chaining things like chamfers together. So I'll come over here to the bottom right and choose my chamfer tool. And I'm going to tilt this a little bit so we can see what we're doing. I want to chamfer this edge. So I'm going to select one edge. And now holding my control key down, I'm going to go all the way around the rest of the edge here. Okay, let me tilt it to take a good look at it. That is what I want. Now I'm going to have an issue here. I think I'm going to deselect this. I'm going to deselect this entire top because this is going to give me a problem here. So I'm going to click. Um, how do I get out of this? Um, uh, I'm going to have to cancel out of this and start over again. Apologies here. So let's go back to the chamfer tool. Now I'm going to select this edge, control key down, this one, this one, this one, and this one. All right. So now it has a default chamfer of seven units. I don't want to go too big. Maybe I'll come back here and just make it a chamfer of five. And I'm going to say OK there. Now I'm pretty sure that if I had tried to chamfer this edge here it wouldn't have worked so it's good for us to leave it for right now. Alright so that does the, I'm going to turn off some of the planes that we can see what we got here and this has made the, the feature that I wanted to create.